Well, you know, I'm, I'll make an opening statement. You know, I, I thought in many ways uh, tonight's victory was our best of the season. And, you know, we've played some really tough teams and, and, and we've been involved in a lot of great games. Uh, but tonight might have been the best of the games. And, you know, I say that because of, I really believe Creighton is an excellent team. Ex excellent team. And I think that will play itself out over the remaining eight, nine weeks of, uh, of the Big East season. I want to credit our crowd. Uh, I mean, the fact our students are back, I mean, is probably worth a couple points. They were amazing. But our, our, our crowd, in addition to our students, was also equally great. I mean, can't imagine an arena that had a better home court atmosphere than the one we just finished playing in. And uh, I will never take that for granted. It's, it's one of the many things that separates Xavier from so many other places. Uh, the love of college basketball, but the love of, uh, of the Muskies. You know, our fans cheer for us. They come to watch us play. Um, in terms of the game itself, you know, I, I, I'm going to start with Sule Boom. To play in a game that fast and have zero turnovers, if, if he just did that, it's really hard to do. The fact he had eight assists and over 20 points, did all the other things, you know, in my mind, he's playing like an All-American. He, he really is. He's been that consistent from day one. You know, Two Holloway was a great guard here, and he led, you know, our teams to some great victories. I coached Two as a freshman, and then I watched him, you know, uh, play for Coach Mack for the remaining three years. And it, it just seemed like at the end of games, you know, Tom Eisner and I were just talking about it. You know, you give Two the ball, uh, he's going to make the free throw, make the play, and, and uh, he was just special. And I, I really think like Sule, he was really – he was terrific tonight. He, he was. Plus, remember, he's guarding Nemhard, which in addition to that is not easy to do. Um, Jack Nungy, eight offensive rebounds. Outstanding. I thought he got off to a slow start. And like Jack oftentimes does, he, uh, he repaired it and ended up playing a, a very good game. And about the 15 second shots that we had was maybe the difference uh, in the game. Also want to just highlight uh, two, two of our guys that didn't start. Jerome Hunter continues to give us amazing minutes off the bench. First half, he had 10 points. Second half, defensively, really helped us. And, uh, and overall, I thought uh, this was Des Claude's best game at Xavier. I mean, he was in there for 24 minutes. In many ways, he was our best defender, regardless of who he was covering. And uh, it's great to see Des become that. If you uh, kind of think back maybe when we played at UC where he would have been defensively, and then you look at where he's at today, it's just a real credit to Dez working hard every day. And it's good to see Jerome and Dez impact uh, our win tonight. About nine minutes left, you guys were down 70 to 64. You were able to rattle off a 16 to four run to sort of compose things and really take control of the game. What do you think allowed you guys to do that? What changed in that stretch? One of the things that changed is we went to our smaller lineup. And Dez was a big, big part of that. So when we subbed, we only had Zach in with four perimeter players or Jack in with four perimeter players. And the game got real fast. And you remember J Zach, Jack hit a three-point shot at the top of the key. That's when Dez had a great drive in transition and got fouled and made the basket. But I thought that lineup kind of sparked us and, and broke the game open. Uh, Creighton then went zone. And uh, we haven't seen much zone. Uh, I'm confident in, in it's hard. we're a hard team to play zone against. But, you know, we haven't seen it. And, you know, we had a couple possessions which offensive rebounds saved us. We didn't necessarily execute as well as, as uh, I think all of us would have hoped against it. But I thought that change in, in the lineup helped our team. Sean, how much did that change maybe help defensively in terms of the tempo? And because it seemed like the first half, very fast pace. They got a lot of baskets, especially in the paint. How did that change in the second half? How did your defense change in the second half? You know, I, I would tell you, we didn't change much. I, I thought we got better at certain things that maybe we weren't as good at in the first half. But, you know, I, I don't have it in front of me, but that was about as fast of a college game as you could watch. <laughs> The final score is indicative of that, but uh, I mean that, that's that's one of those where when, when the sun rises tomorrow, everybody's going to feel a little different 
Um, that was a very, very fast, well-played offensive game. If you look at both teams' turnovers, I think at the half we had five and they had six. And to play that many possessions with low turnovers is uh, – it's really, I think, a credit to both both teams. Uh, we weren't as smart at the end of the game. You know, that, that's on me. I, I'm going to address a couple things at the end. Uh, all of us have to realize the value of having somebody like Sule Boom on your team. We have to be able to get him the ball late. Uh, you don't hold it. You don't, you don't think about it. You do it. You do it. You do it right away. Uh, same thing with, you know, how we get him the ball on our full court inbounds. We, we struggled a little bit against Villanova. Again, I, I thought tonight that turnover was big against us. That's something we have to fix. And, uh, but the fix is only get him the ball. It's just that maybe we go about it differently. Uh, and, and look, we missed two front ends of a one and one. And one of the big reasons the game got so close is we did not make the free throws that we were shooting. We missed two front ends. You know, some of the things you're talking about here and the winning streak and just how this team's gelling together. I think from us observers on the outside, you would think, oh, this, this seems like a special season in the making. If, and from your perspective, having coached a long time, it's January 11th. Uh, is, is that okay to say that, that this is a special season in the making? Well, I, I think what, you, what we definitely can say is, look, all, all you can go on is the 17 games we've played. I know who we played in the non-conference. I feel like we gained a lot from that experience, win or lose. And uh, I'll put the Big East Conference up against any conference in the country. I really will. It, it, it's kind of like that SEC football feeling, except we tend to play every three days instead of every seven. I mean, we play Marquette next. And that's a 12 noon tip off. I mean, if if you're a season ticket holder right now, I mean, you love college basketball. I mean, this is this is the the building to walk into right now because it just seems like every time we're playing a game, we're playing against a really formidable foe. And uh, I can't give enough credit to Creighton. Uh, uh, their record will take care of itself. Uh, they're an outstanding team, and uh, I know this that when we play them again, whenever that is, it's going to be a really Tough task to go to Omaha and beat them. They're they're uh, they're a team that has a lot of great parts. Um, what were your thoughts on Zach tonight? Obviously, coming off a big uh, offensive night, but ten rebounds tonight, five assists. He uh, you know he he did some other things, and is that what you need? Uh, every game's different, and the games are going to be different. Uh, what would you yeah. think of his contribution? Zach Zach helped us win. He was just uh, the best player on the court against Villanova. You know, tonight he scored, I think, five pretty quick points. And then, you know, his scoring wasn't a part of his game. And when you're used to scoring and you don't score, sometimes you don't do some of those other things as well. But I thought his effort on defense was good. He had double figures rebounding. And, uh, and he made some good plays. But that's the beauty of having a good team. You know, you're not reliant always on the same player or players to play well every game. Just like each of our players has taken a turn to have a great game, I think each of our guys has taken a turn having a subpar night. And then they bounced back. So it's it's that balance that uh, I think has carried us to this point. Sean, you're up 86-79 to 79 with a minute and a half left. Creighton climbs back in it. It's an 86-84 to 84 game with 13 seconds left. Probably everyone in the gym knew that Baylor Shireman was going to get the ball. Colby Jones is on him. Can you talk to us about that possession and Colby forcing a turnover in that spot? That's the second time this season in this building with the game on the line where a defensive play from Colby has maybe saved you. Yes. And uh, we had an opportunity to call a timeout. So we, we put him on Shireman. And, and I'll tell you, this wasn't Colby's best defensive night. It wasn't. Uh, uncharacteristically, a couple times he got beat. And, uh, again, when you say that, you also have to, to give credit to where credit's due. And that is, there's some players on Creighton's team that are very difficult to defend. So it's not like Colby wasn't trying. But I didn't think he was at the level that he usually is. But on that last play, to your point, uh, we knew that the ball was going to be in his hands somehow. And the fact that he stayed down, he didn't foul, he used his size and quickness, uh, you're right. He did that against Seton Hall, a uh, similar situation. 
Um, Kobe's a special player. I, I didn't realize he had 20 points until the game was over. I almost felt like he had a quiet night. And uh, that's a sign of a really good player when you can take for granted a 20-point a night and then doing what he did at the end.